Hi everyone, thank you for coming for Python uh, programming for data science. So today we'll uh, continue with um, um, three topics actually. Um, um, uh, we're going to talk about input output, all right? And we'll talk about exceptions and then recursion functions, all right? Uh, for input output, okay, remember that last time we were writing codes? Okay, let's refresh a little bit what we have covered like, uh, um, in this course. So we started started knowing about the variables, how to create the variables. So we said the variables have no type. When you when you when you declare them, you don't have type. So you could say x equals ten. X is an integer, but it's integer because it was declared. Okay. We don't have, for example, integer. Okay. Uh, to declare it, right? So we spoke about integer, float, string, different kinds of uh, variables, right? Then after that, we spoke about indentation. So when you have, um, uh, in, in Python is one of few languages that you have to have indentation. This is very important. So if you don't have right indentation, it could not program, it could give you compiler error, and could give you logic error, right? So it's a very important. After that, remind me what we spoke about. We spoke about the statements, right? The if statement, if. Okay, x for example greater than zero. Okay, and don't forget the colon. Okay, and when you write for example, you have to have the indentation. Print for example whatever you wanna print, right? Okay, we spoke about the for loop for. Okay, for example in in range ten, right? Don't forget the colon. All right, and then you have the statements. You have the statements, right? What else we spoke about? While, Oops. while, true, for example, lose forever, and then state. In this case, you could use what? To exactly you have to use break, for example, right? All right. Do we need to have a semicolon at the end of the sentence? We don't need to need a semicolon, but you could. It will not give you any error. You need semicolon if you join two sentences together, right? And you know, explain how it works is very simple, right? Okay. How about do while? Do while. Do we have do while here? Do we have do while? What? Are you skipping, guys? Do while. Do we have do while? No. No. Do we have case? I can see C plus no. plus. No, we don't. That's the statements that we we have, right? Very simple. Then after that, we spoke about, like, all right, uh, about um, objects. So we said everything in Python is plus. plus, OK? String is coming from string in class. Integer is coming from integer in class. Anything you have is a class, is a class. So we, the first thing we spoke about is the, this, what we call this, for example, List. list, okay. It's a it's a list. So if I say x equals this, so x is an object of the class list, a class list, and it's a, it has four elements, and these are integer elements. So it's a list of integers, right? I could have, for example, y, okay, could have be integer of list of lists, right? So I could have, for example, one, two, three, and then I have four, five, six, okay, and this uh, seven, eight, nine. So what is this? List of a list, right? Then after that we spoke about something like that. What is this? One, two, three, four. What is that? Tuple. Tuple. What's the difference between a tuple and a list? Here's the country and the other. So it's immutable. Okay, so say this is immutable, right? And this is not mutable. Which exactly like what you said, you could alter any value inside the list, but for this you cannot change anything, right? One more. What we have covered last time? Dictionary. Okay. 
So we could have, for example, a dictionary A. So how we create a dictionary? So this is parenthesis, square bracket, and curly bracket. Okay, curly bracket. And uh, how it has two elements. What are the two elements? Key and value. Key and value. So for example, we could have name, column, check word, for example. All right? Okay, we have age, for example. Age <coughs> nineteen. Okay. Right? Okay, so it's like a key and a value, key and a value dictionary. Alright? Is it immutable or not immutable? Mutable. Mutable, right? Alright. So that's what we covered last time. We covered about different things, uh, a lot of things last time. So that's a refreshment. And you know, Everything in Python is an object. It comes from a class. Okay. Sometimes, I mean, there is like built-in classes that you don't have to import. It. So where the classes are, how the classes are grouped into last person in the right into what? Huh? Bracket. Classes. We call it packets. Do we call it packets in Python? Do we call it libraries? Do we call it libraries? See, he's just the first time he knows. <laughs> modules. Objects. Modules. He said modules. We call them module, right? Thank you. He just came and he knew. Module, right? Modules. In your mind, it's a library. That's fine. It's a library. Okay. So what we do before we, we try to use a class inside a module, what we have to do? We have to import it, right? So we start by import. For example, import, import, pandas, as pd. All right. Do I have to use as pd? No. No. It's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. So, for example, if you are accessing a class, if you access a, uh, a class, for example, instead of saying pandas, it's a long dot whatever, you could say pd dot the class. For sure. Especially when you are writing thousands of lines, you, you try to save the amount of time that you're writing. You agree? You agree? All right. So, um, what we last time worked on is also, let me refresh you about the functions, okay? So, you know, class is built of two things. What are the two things form a class? Attributes, attributes and, and methods. Attributes and methods, all right? All right, so what is a method? It's a function, right? Method is a function. What's the difference between a method and a function? Function is built into the language, to the code language, and methods are from a classes, in a classes, right? All right. So always to look at any method or any function, look at it as a box. Okay? As a box. Okay. The box has a logic. Okay? Statements, logic. Right? It has an input, input, and output. Okay? So you pass the input to the box, okay, to do processing, and it will give you an output. Alright? All right. How we write it? So it's like diff, diff, right? And we have two parentheses, right? Colon in here. And the elements in here, for elements, for example, E1, E2, E3, for example, they are the inputs. So what are the inputs? E1, E2, E3, for example. So it will take the inputs. There's your logic, does something. And what is the output? This is the logic. This is the box. This is the box, right? And at the end, the last statement of the box is return. Okay, is the return 
value. So the output is a return value. In most of the languages, like C for example, it will return one value. In here it could return what? Okay. Or two or three, whatever. Tubal, tubal of outputs. Tubal of outputs. You could have multiple values returned. All right? If you are, for example, inheriting a class of integer, for example, or any class. So when you go to the manual, you will find it built off. The manual will tell you what are the inputs and what are the expected output. What are the expected output. All right? So you have to think of any method you use, like a, a box that has inputs and outputs. All right? Very simple. Very simple. Okay? If you import, for example, a string, import string. Okay? There is a class called a string, for example. Alright? All right. There is many methods there. Before you use the method, if you don't know, you have to go to the manual, check what are the inputs and what are the outputs. Okay. Example for a string method. Can you remember an example for a string method? Sort? Sort. So if I have, for example, okay, if I have, uh, for example, um, uh, y equals hello. Y equals hello. So what is y? It is a string. Okay. When I say y, dot sort and save it in for example z so what is the value of z will be the sorted value of hello the sorted value of hello all right so y dot sort what is sorting here is a method as a method Could we have some inputs in here? Yes. Check the manual. All right? But since I am able to use it with no input, that means all the inputs are? That's why you are talking to me. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you need to talk. The inputs are what? If I am able to use a sort with no inputs, that means all the inputs are? Optional. Optional. They are all optional. Okay, all optional. All right. So, also what we covered last time, that when we do processing, we need to know, you know, we need to display the output. So, what is the simplest way to display the output? What's the simplest way? Print. Print statement, right? Print. So, for example, if I say x equals y plus 1 and y equals 3, okay, then we say print x. What would be the output? 4, right? All right. What's the problem of printing to the screen that once you close the program, it's all gone? Right? It's all gone. Let's say that you have a, like a very intensive program that does processing, okay? Um, and you're collecting data. The okay, once you close the program, it's done. It's gone, right? Right? Remember in the program we wrote that uh, movies, uh, the, the movie uh, program, so there is a list of movies. You add to the list. You add again to the list. You add again to the list, right? You remove one of the list. You close the program, all your work is done. All right? So this is not the right way to write programs, especially when you're dealing with the data. So you usually try to read the data from a file and write the data to a file. So you have a file. Okay, to read to a file or write to a file, right? Okay. Now the data could be 
the data could be digital, the data or the files. Okay, could be what? Text. And could be binary. Right? And it could be, let's make the three, uh, CSV, comma separated values, or comma separated values. Python give you a library to deal with all of them. So you could create a text file, and then you could create a binary file and a comma separated file. Okay, comma because mostly is a comma separated, but it could be a tab, it could be a space, it could be anything you want. So just values that are separated with certain certain you know character you specify, right? All right. So if you have a file. From your previous experience with the other languages, you need to read a file. What is the first thing you have to do? Open. Open. Okay? You have to open it, right? You have to open the file. All right? What are the common modes for opening? Read, write. Read, write, append. Right? Read, write, and append. Then, what are you going to do? Either read from it. Or write. Right? Write to it. Or append. After you do whatever you want to do, what you should do? Close. Close. <coughs> Close the file. So remember that for any file we open within Python, we need to open it in a mode. So if you open it in read, that means you're going to read it from it. You can't write to it. All right? And you do whatever you want to do, and then you then you close the file. Close the file. All right? That's one way which will fix the problems we had in the previous lectures in our programs, that whenever we do anything within the program, it's gone. So now we we'll try to read it from a file, Whatever we do, we save into the file before we quit. When we go back to the program, we read the data again from the file. We read it again from the file, and which is very easy. Yes. So you just click open and then you get the file name and the parentheses, right? Yes. You have to read. You have to what? You have to hit uh, down read. Yeah, I'll go through the language right now. Okay, I mean, this is just general information. I'll go through the language right now. Okay? Get close. Very simple, right? But we'll go through the language right now. I mean, this is just general what we're going to talk about, right? Okay. So, that's one thing we are going to talk about today. The second thing we're going to talk about quickly is, <coughs> is exception, right? So, Let's say that you say, okay, MO. How we read it from the keyboard? Somebody told me. How we read it from the keyboard? How we read data to the program? To type to the screen, we do print. To read in, what do we do? Huh? You do output? Is there, is there a command? Just a second. Is there a command called output? Too long? No. Now, if you have a code, do you do the homework? Yeah. Okay. So now when you have the results, you print it to the screen, what do you do? Print. Yeah. Okay. If you need to key, read it from the keyboard, how you read? What is the, what is the, what is the function to read it from a keyboard? Okay. Input. Right? Input, all right. So, so for example, if I say input, input, and then the message enter integer value, value. Right? When I execute this, okay, and I enter five. So let's say x equals five, right? So what's the value of x? 5. Because 5 is an integer value, right? What if I enter 5 like this? It 
So give me error. Because this is not what? What? Not an integer value. Especially if I do, for example, cast it like an integer. So can I, can, can I cast five written like this to be an integer? No. No. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to enter it like this, right? So what will happen now? The program will give you error, or give you exception. The, the error in running in, in, in running program, we call it exception. We call it exception, right? We'll throw an exception. So to avoid these problems, there is something called a try. So we start with a try. Try, colon, this. If it gives you exception, accept, do something. It does not hang up your problem. Okay? So it will check if the syntax is correct. If it gives an exception, how you handle it. So if there is exception, mostly what you're gonna what you're gonna enter, what you're gonna tell us. Print. Please enter integer. You cannot enter text, for example. Right? So if you run this program and you enter five like this, except will not be will not go to except. You're gonna go to the next sentence, right? But if you enter five, five like that, what it will do? It will go to the accept and will execute the sentence. All right? Can you have multiple exceptions? You could. You could have try, accept, accept for different accept. And there is, by the end, there is a sentence called finally. 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 Okay? We're going to talk about that. The last thing we're going to talk about, if we have time, but it's your responsibility to study it if you don't have time, which is recursion. Right? Recursion, right? What is recursion? Function, function, function called self. Can you give me an example for a function calls itself? Like factorial. For example, if you need, for example, three factorial. What is a three factorial? It's a three, it's a three, three times two factorial. two factorial. And that will be three times two times one. Factorial, right? So you could write a function that calls itself until it comes to the base condition. At the base condition, what will happen? Fully right? Recursion, and I'm sure you did it in A or C, C++ course, you did a lot of that. Okay? So, here, you know, try to, okay, so let's, for example, okay, uh, and here, go on here, come on, okay, let's send you, and I need to have, uh, a file, it's called a file, okay, and let's call it foo, dot txt okay okay let's call put names shakur for example uh, chris john what uh, chris team i don't know okay fair all right so there's a file called for the text okay so let's write a code so for example okay how, how, how we, well, this is a file, we need, the first thing before we do anything, what we have to do, we have to, you know, we have to, um, you know, um, um, open. open it, right? So what we would say, open, I'm sorry, open, okay, okay, open, and, all right, what's the name of the file, foo.txt, okay, and what I'm doing with it? Let's say read or write, let's do write, okay? Read or write, whatever, right? So that's the first thing to do, the file. 
and a heifer assigned. Everything is an object. So, for example, let's say a read file. I assign it to object read file. Okay? Read file. Okay. All right. Or I could change it to write. Okay? Or append, for example. Write or append to the file. The file is already existing, right? Okay. So now, if I need to write to that file, what should I do? I, I take the object rf dot and give me here the options. What I can, what I'm trying to do in here, write for example, write, okay, and let's see here. I'm gonna add one more name. I'm appending one more name. Let's say what? Uh, uh, what? Give me a name. Okay. Steve. What? Let's say Alice. Okay, or uh, yeah, Alice is fine. Alice for with you. Okay, write an Alice and all of that. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to. Then after that, what should I do with with this file? Okay, rf dot close. Okay, close. So in here, I open the file because it's already there. Okay, um, and uh, I added the name. Okay, and this execute it. If I execute this file, okay, go in here, run test. All right, let's go to the foo. Added an Alice. You see Alice in here? It was added. Added, right? Okay. Let me remove Alice in here, from here. And what should I do? I should. I think I should have plus, for example. Or I could add it in here like a new line. Let's execute it again. Okay. And let's execute no errors. Should it be for Alice? What? Should it be for Alice? Uh, yes, should be before. That's true because it's coming from that. Okay. And, uh, and I have to move this comma in here. I have to do like that. Good? Alright? I don't really need this in here. Alright, Alice. Okay. And let me first remove the Alice from here. Alright? And let's go in here and run it. Okay. So you have Alice added in here. Okay, Alice added in, in here. All right, so what we did basically in the file, we have first to open the file, okay, as an append. If, for example, now, if I do, okay, write, not append, what will happen to the file? When I open it as write, what will happen to the file? Right. We'll overwrite it, okay, overwrite. So you have to be careful that, you know, first time you do write, then after that you do append, otherwise, Again, I lose your information. This is right, just for, okay. Okay, so when you go in here, it's only the new sentence. So whatever was in the file before was deleted, right? All right, so again, you have a big problem if you don't do close. So always you have to do a close. You have to do a close uh, sentence, right? You could do it in, in a much nicer way, by the way. You could do it, okay, so instead of, for example, having like, uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, manual clause, you could open it, for example, with a with statement. With, there's something called with. So with, we open, okay, and you give it as, as a shortcut. So as, okay, RF. Remember, we assign it to RF, read file, whatever. Okay, you open it with that, and don't forget the colon. So what you did in here, okay, you open the foo for, for writing, and you give it a shortcut as RF, and then you could do whatever in here, and you don't need to do the closed sentence by itself, because by, the, by itself, the last sentence, and it will be closing the sentence. So with, and you open the foo.txt, and write mode, okay, and writing, for example, now Alice went to it. Let's try it. Okay. So let's try it. Okay. 
and else one in the file. All right? And that's the better way of using it. To use always with. I mean, to use with. If you need, for example, to read, you need to read the file. Already we have the file. Now I need to open it as R to read the, the data inside it. So RF, for example, we don't use write, we, we use what? Read line, for example. We could use a function called read line. Okay. Read line. Okay. Okay. And we are not writing anything, we are reading. Read write, okay. Read write and all. Read the the, the file and um, okay. And what we are doing in here, for example, we could assign it to the print. So print. So whatever I'm reading, it will be printed. Okay. Let's try it. It's in here. Okay, I'm sorry. So it's reading. And, okay. All right. So it's reading the value and printing it to the screen. Okay, that's what we have in this. Okay. So it's read the first line. Okay, the first line and the print the screen. If I change it in here to chapter one, for example, and run it again. Okay. Okay. So the read line, it will read the sound. Okay. It will read the first the first line. If I do read line again, what does it do? It will read the second line. Okay, it will keep the pointer at the new line. At the a new line. All right. Okay. Is it clear? I mean, it's, you know. Okay. So this is a text file, right? All right. Okay. So moving forward. Okay. Um, now let me switch to the PowerPoint. I mean, we could write the code, but if I'm gonna start writing all the code, gonna take forever, uh, you could try it yourself. And that's what you should do, by the way, at home. You should try that, the code by yourself. So, and always you're gonna do uh, mistakes and errors, anyways. All right. So, uh, as you said in here, uh, open the file and you have to specify the mode. Okay, it could be read, write, append, a binary. We'll come to the binary later. Don't forget the clause. The better way always, okay, to use with open. So, for example, in here, with open, the name of the file, give the mode, which is right in here, as give it a shortcut, the object, all right? From now on, from now on, you don't use the name of the file. You use the object name. Anything you want to do, use the object name. So, which is in here, out file, what I'm doing now, Right, I use the right method. Test, for example. Whatever sentence. It will be written, written to the text file. Do I need to use a closed sentence in here? I don't. Yes? Does that file already exist, or are you creating it when you do that? Hmm? Are you creating that file when you do that, or does it already exist? You, uh, I mean, if the, if the file does not exist, will you create a new one? Mm -hmm. If it already exists, it's overwrite it. If it's already exists, you should use append, unless you don't want it anymore. Okay? All right? So if it is. If the file's in the in the uh, project folder, yes. it'll, you don't have to, just the file name is 
Exactly. You know, yes. Kind of yeah. I mean, um, that's a good question. What if it's not in the project, not in the same directory where you have the code? So you have to put the path, the whole path. All right? And, and you know, the whole path, for example, the problem, for example, is C column, right? C column, for example, whatever, this one. Okay? And then foo.txt. So usually you have, and it's between this, but what you have, to remove the special meaning of this, you put two objects, right? So you have to use the way we write the path inside the, the okay. Right. But here, yes, we assume that it's in the same direction. All right? If I need to read, so I have to change the attribute to read, and then, okay, I, I give the object in file. So from now on, whatever I use, I don't use the name of the, of the name of the file. I use the object name. The object name is in file. I, you could call it any name you want. Okay? Then, I, uh, in file, there is a function that's called read line. Okay? Actually, there's a three functions, three methods. There is read. Okay? There's three methods that you could use, read, if I cannot have them, there is read, there is read line, and there is read lines with S, all right? And they work differently, they work differently. So read, it will read the word by word. You have to specify how much you need to read from the file. Read line, it read the line and keeps the pointer at the next line. So if you execute, for example, read line three times, it will read the first line, and then it reads the second line, and the three line. Read lines, it will read all, all the file, line by line. Okay, we'll see it in a second. All right? All right, so the write method of, of a file object, so you could write a string. Usually files have a string, right? String, so right. So, so for how you write, open, you open the file you have, write attribute, you give it an object name, file, anything you could give it, right? Okay, and then file that's right, you're writing this in here. And what you do at the end, of, if, you, if this is your line, you have to end it with a new line. That next time you add it, it's gonna go to the next line. All right? So far is it clear? Okay? Same thing in here. And here, what we are doing? Append. Okay, what we are doing? Append. Okay, so we are appending to the clause. So append, write the same thing. Very simple. So the contents of the text file after the two lines have been written. The first time, what we did, the first line, what we did in here, we opened a file in here. That means we created a file. We added John Cleese, and then after we appended to the same file, we added Eric Idle. Okay. If you look at the, at, at, you know, um, the, the the syntax, it was the first line, new line, first line, new line, and if you display the file in the text editor, it will look like that. It will look like that. Two lines in that file. Two lines in that file. Any questions? All right, so we said to read an object, three methods of a file object, read, read lines with S, read line. All right, All right. so the first thing is, you know, in here, this is the old fashion of reading from a file. So with open, you open the file as a file, and you could use a for loop. You always could for, use a for, for line in a file. So print line. And in here, what you are doing in here, you're changing the end, the end of the line to a, with a space. What you are removing, you're removing the new line, the slash m. Okay? Because if you do put this, it will have two new lines. Why? Because print by itself, it comes with a new line by default. default. So you'll have, try it out, you'll have the line of text and then empty line, then the line of text, empty line. 
what, where is the two, two new lines coming from? One coming from the file itself, and the other one coming from print. From print, because at the end, by default, the end of a print sentence is a new line. Remember? Right? So, how to read uh, the entire string? Okay? Again, you open the file, the zip file, you give it an object name, and then after that, you're saving it, saving it in a string value. So, if you type type of contents, okay, this is a string, file read. You're going to read the data to the uh, contents, and you could print it. So, and you print it to print it for you this way. All right? Again, what you are doing, you're opening the file, then you're reading it to a contest to a variable, and you're printing the string. So what we are doing in here, we're reading the file to a string variable. To a string variable. Could a string be multiple lines? Of course. We have learned that. A string could be multiple lines. Okay. All right. Uh, now, you usually, I mean, when you read a string, would you like, I mean, usually you read it to a string or you read it to a list? Could be both, right? But maybe list is more useful for programming, right? Why? Because you could reference each, each, each line, right? So if you have a list, for example, in here, if you have a list, for example, of text, so let's call it L, okay? Okay, and this is the list. So you have hello. Okay, hi. How are you? All right? And so on and so forth. So if you need to access the, the second one, the second one, how you could say print L of one. It will give you what? The high, right? The high. But if you save it as a string, it will be like a multi-line string. It will be harder, you know, to deal with the boundary of that line. You agree? All right. So is there a way that we could read the entire file as a list? Yes, there is a way. Very simple. So you open the file, and you don't use read now. What do you use? Read lines. Okay, read lines. So it will read the lines of the file, okay? The first line will keep it in the first element of the list. The second line in the second element of the list. Third line and so on and so forth. Okay, so again, what we were doing before, we were reading the file. Reading the file. You could read it to a text variable or you could read it to a list, to a list. So a list will be, make it easier for you maybe in the program. It depends what we are doing. If you are just reading to print, maybe you just read it as a, as a string and a print, right? But if you are reading it for manipulation, manipulation to do different things, maybe you read it as a list. Both are available for you. How to read each line. So this is read, read lines to read all the lines to the list. If you need to read each line, very simple. You don't use read line, what you use? Read line, not read lines, with S, read line. So you open the file, you give it an object name. So you need to have the first line, call it number one, file that read line. It reads the first line for you. If I execute this again, it will read now the second line. Execute it for the third time, it will read the third line, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what we have learned now that there's a three ways for reading a file. The first way is read, and this will read it to, talk to me, read it to a string. Read the whole file to a string variable, all right? If I need to read it to a list, which, which, which method I have to use? Read lines. Read lines, all right? If I need to read it line by a line, which, which one I have to use? Read line. It reads it to text again. Okay? 
So these are all available for you that you could use in your program. How to write and read a list of strings. So for example, in here I have members, two people. What is this? What numbers in here? It's a list, right? So what I'm trying to do now, to write it to where? To a file, to a file. What kind of file? Binary file? Text file. So how many types of files? Wake up. How many types of files we have? Three. Three. Which are? Text. text binary. CSS. CSS. Okay. So in here, I'm writing it to a text file. And I'm writing to it. So for M in members, okay, M members, members is the list. So file that write M, okay, plus a new line. So it's going to loop through the list and will print to the file, print to the file, very simple. Previous slides, we learned how to read the text either to a string variable or to a list of class, right, variable, object, all right? In here, I'm writing, I'm writing to the file. Same thing here, how to read lines in a file into a list. So I created empty list, and I have a member that text, which is a file. So I need to read it to this. So what I do for a line in a file, what is the first thing? Line that replace, I'm replacing the new line with nothing, with empty. So what I'm doing here, I'm, re I'm re removing what? The new line, okay, why? Because I need to read it to where? To a list. I need the value, I don't need the new line with it, okay? I need the value without the new line. So I remove it, okay? And then members append the line, all right? So I'm reading line by line, and I make sure every time I read a line, I remove from the end of it what? The new line, the new line. When you go home, Try it without the sentence, see how messy it will become, okay? It will not be like this. So if you don't put this line, I hate this, I can't write in this one. If you don't put this sentence, that replace, so how it will look? John, please, backslash n. And Eric Dale, backslash n. You don't need backslash n in your list. This is not part of the information you're trying to save, right? Is it? No. It's not, okay? So, yes? For the second open, we don't need to open the file any, anymore. Which one? Second open. This one? Yeah. You need. That's what we did. We opened it. Yeah, but which mode? Huh? Which mode? So, well, I mean, you did not specify the mode right now. Yeah. Okay? So it will be read. I think the default is reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. All right? I think it's it's the but I'm not sure. All right. Or it could be we ha I have to search it. Uh, you know, uh, it could be you could do anything with it if you don't specify. It. So it depends. I mean, I don't know. One of one of them. I don't know. The default is read. Read? Yeah. Okay. So how to write and read a list of members? Okay. For example, I have years. What is this? A list. List of what? Years, okay. With open, I'm opening years of text, writable, giving it an object name for year in years. And what I'm doing in here, writing to the file, writing to a file. So, this is how to read items from a list, okay, in a list from a file. Now I need to bring the data into a list. So I created empty list, and I need to populate this list from where? From the file. So with open, I open the file, gave it object name for line and file. So the file is built off lines. Line, line one, line two, line three, until the end. So the first thing, I'm, I'm replacing the new line with nothing. And then after that, I'm appending it to where? To the list. I'm appending the value to the list. Right. Clear? Okay, so uh, there is a program here for a training. You could try them by yourself. As I told you, I mean, for example, this is a program, the program we wrote last time. Let's take a look at the interface. So the command, okay, the movie list program. List, list all movies. 
in the previous programs where we save the movies? In the file? In the list. In the program we had a list, right? All right. Add, add a movie. Where are we adding the movie to? To the list. Delete, deleting from. The list and exit, right? So you could work in that program for 10 hours adding, removing, adding like 200 movies. You close the program, everything is gone. Why? It's saved in the list, and the list saved where? In the RAM. And what is a RAM? Temporary memory, right? Close the program, it's gone, right? So that's not the right way. I mean, the right way is to have, if you have like a database, you could read it from the database. You have a file, read it from the, a file. You need to be to do modification, you do modification to the file, etc. right? So, command, list, read the three movies. Monty, Python, and the Holy Grail, for example. Where is it coming from? From the list before, right? Then add, if I add Casablanca, and then I do list again with the ham number four, Casablanca. If I delete, then I number four, it will remove Casablanca, right? All from the list. Now in this program, when we define it, that you read it from a file. From a file, there's a file. So you have the code, you take a look at it, play with it. The way. So what we did in here, so this is write movies, uh, you know, we've opened file name as writable as a file. For movie in the movie, file write movie. This is the write function. You can you could add a movie. In here, what you do? Read. Okay? You're reading from where? From a file. Okay? So play with the program. It's for you. I don't have time to cover it. I will not have time. Okay? All right. So that's from now on, for all your homework and assignments, when there is a data that you have to generate or read, you read it from where? From a file and write it to a file. Don't submit any homework, okay, without including files. You need to do, get a practice using files, okay? Once we cover database, we'll ask you to create a simple database to read and write to the database, right? Okay. So now, uh, write rows, okay, write writer. So the writer function of comma separated value, okay? So comma, comma separated value like what? Like Excel file. Right? Always Excel file, you could save it as CSV, right? All right? Okay, and most of our work, by the way, in data science, that's what we deal with. Like all of our work in data science, we deal with what? CSV, right? All right. So we don't use write, we use writer. There is R, just to differentiate. And you could write rows method, okay, where you could write. So let's take a quick example. So let's say there's a movie. What is movies in here? What is it? Speak up. List. Huh? Not a tube. It's a square bracket. It's a list of the list. Okay, so a list of the movie. The, the first movie has a name and production year, for example. Name, production year. So it's a list or a list of a list, right? So this is a list. And inside the list, what are the elements inside the list? Another list. Another list. Another list. So it's a list of? A list or list, right? Or in our old terminology, it's like two dimension matrix, right? Two dimension matrix, right? So, first of all, we have to import the CSV. Easy, we import it. Then, so I have this, I, I've been creating a file called movies.csv, okay? It's right. And now I have to tell, okay, what I do with a new line, right? With a new line, Okay, it's nothing. I, there's no new one. Okay, I gave it an object name. So writer. Okay, CVS writer, a file. So now I created an object. Okay, and after that I could write rows to the movies. Write rows the movies. So this one will be written to a first line in the CSV, and this line will be written to the second, and this will be write, written to the third, to the third, right? Right? So what is the difference we have now? Two things. We're dealing with CSV. Number two, we don't use write, we use writer. Writer. And you always you have to, you know, put what you're gonna do with the new line. What's the new line? 
So if you tie the content of CSV, it will be like this. So this is a list, and this is a file. Okay, this is a file. Okay, the reader function. Okay, now we don't use read, we use reader. So remember, in the regular file, text file, have read, read lines, read line. Now we have reader, the same thing. So with the open, we open the CSV file. We give it an object name, and then we create a reader, okay? And then you could read it row by row. Now, in, 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 in the file, in the CSV file, we don't call it line. What we call it? Row, right? Rows. In Excel table, what we have? Columns and rows, right? Rows, we call it a row. And same thing, same thing. So if I say print row of zero, it will print row of zero, okay? And so on and so forth. There is an optional argument that can be used to change CSV format. What usually, what, what format we need to change in the CSV? The separation element, right? By default, it's what? Comma. Can I make it tap? Can I make it slash? Can I make it backslash? Can I make it at? Can I make it anything, right? Right? So very simple, quoting the quote minimum, and then the quote character, okay, and the, the delimiter, okay? For example, here I'm changing the delimiter to be a tap. By default, it's a comma. Okay, you can change it to whatever I want, right? And so on and so forth, okay? This is an example of the user interface for the movie program, the same movie program, okay? But now it's not a regular text. What it is now? Comma separated values file, okay? Comma separated values file, try it out. So in here, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a CSV. Okay, same program, but now we are not using regular text, we are using what? Comma separated values, okay? Try it out, you have the program, and I told you I, I, I include the code for you in the, in the, in the notes. So always you could cut and paste and try that. Now we'll come finally to the binary files. So we'll play it with the text, CSV, now we'll put up. So there is bump and load, and we're dealing with a binary file. Binary file like what? Can you give me an example for a binary file? Speak up. Like what? Continue. Speak up. No, a binary file like what? Like a photo. Like a video. These are binary, right? Sure. Ones and zeros. Okay? It's not a text file. It's a binary file. Right? It's a huge file. That's why we use dump, dump and load, right? Binary file. The same thing, same thing, okay? So for example, I have a movie and I would like to save it to a binary file, not to a text file, not a CS file. So very simple. First of all, I have to import a module called pickle. Pickle, all right? Then, okay, what, why usually, why I need sometimes to save it in a binary? Let's say I have a file. Why I need to make it a binary, not a text? Encryption. Huh? Encryption. Encryption, you said? Yeah. yeah, for privacy. And because it's more compressed. Yeah. To be more compressed. Okay? So that's one reason and all that. Okay? So how to write. And, 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 and also, some files are by themselves are binary. So the photo. What is the photo? It's a binary file. Video. Sound is a binary file, but what I'm saying is this is the text, and this is just an this, this is just an example. I'm saving it to a binary file, not necessarily. I mean, I don't have to. Okay, so open movies and dot binary and write binary. Always now we use WB write binary file, and then to save it to the file, what we do? Dump, dump. You don't read or write a binary file. You dump and load. If you need to read it, what you do? Load. All right? So basically, and this is the same program uh, using dump and, uh, and read, okay? All right, so what we have learned now, 
very quickly. We have learned that there we have generally two types of uh, files, binary and text. The text could be text or CSV, all right? And we should, I mean, usually we should read and write to these files. We must open the file, do whatever you want to do, and then we close it. Python made it easier with a st statement called with. So if you use with, you don't have to use a close. If you don't use with, make sure you use close. It's always good to, to open it with one mode, with a mode. If you are opening it for read, then for read. If you open it for write, then for write, or for append, right? Okay? Uh, and there is, uh, to, to write to a text file, you, there is a write, and to read it, there's three methods. Read, read lines, and read line. We know the difference, right? Let's go to the CSV. To write to it, there is a method called writer, or writer, writer, ro write rows, writer, and writer rows. To read from a CSV, what we have? Reader. Reader. There is R. End. End. Let's go to the binary file. So, first of all, in, uh, I forgot to mention in CSV we have to import a module called CSV. In the text, we don't have to import any module. It's spelled M. When you go to the binary, what you have to do? To import pickle. And you have how many methods in pickle? Two. First one, dump. I pray that nobody dumps you ever okay, in your life. Okay, dump. And to read it, what we have? Load. Okay, simple. That's I O. It's not as simple as that. There's so many options, so many other options, and so many other things that, you know, um, um, I think I created a link for you that you could learn from it. Oh, let me tell you my life is almost off. So you go in here, Thunder Comet, let me go to here. Okay. All right, so this is file readings and all of that. So a lot of instructions in here, you can go over it. And um, So it's not as simple as you say, remember we know about R, what is R B read by R plus, what is R plus for example, right? There is many other options, R B plus, write, write, write binary, W opens a file for both writing and reading, okay? So there is different modes, not as simple, and there's a lot of details that, okay? So, you know, um, uh, there's many, um, many attributes and many functions that also methods okay more than what we have explained we just gave you the basics so if your project or your assignment that deals with io just go to the link go through it get details again as i told you when you write any program in python in any language right nowadays the language is so big you cannot you know memorize everything you cannot keep it in your mind so you have to always 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 is a good habit to have a secondary or a second screen open in the manual and look at all the methods provided to you in that class in that uh, okay sometimes you need to do a function and you spend like writing 20 30 14 lines to do it but there is a function to do it for you there's a method already provided so try to know what the library we library in java or c plus plus what the module gives you okay there is a lot of methods this methods like methods like tools for you that you could use okay but you know you have to know them you have to know them. How you know them? A quick visit for all the methods in that 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 what module it will give. You don't have to understand it completely. 
Just look. Is it useful for you? Okay? Example, like in a string, there is something called sort. All of you wrote, all of us, you know, at a certain point, we wrote a sort code, right? Okay? So binary sort, bubble sort, whatever. Why I have to write it? It's a method available for me. Just call it and use it, right? Silly example, but, but you know, that's what it is. When we started programming 20, 25 years, all this method is not available. Everything you have to do yourself. Nowadays, everything is available. Just, you know, you need to know how to build the blocks of, the, the blocks of data. That's why I, I, I call it, it's the programming of boxes. Okay? Boxes, just you have to arrange the boxes in a certain way. Each box has an input, output, how to do it, you know, okay? We're going to come to classes next week. Everything in your, in your, I mean, starting from next class, hi, from next week, it has to be with the classes. We don't write sequential programming anymore, classes. Even if it's like one class, you have to write it in a class. Start with a class, okay? All right? So that's how it is. What is the classes? You're dividing the program into a classes. Your own classes. Each class kind of having a function, a job, general job. Each class will have attributes and will have methods, your own methods. All right? You call them from the main. All right? We'll learn more about object Korea next time. Let's have a break for 10 minutes, okay? And then we'll come back. So we'll continue. I mean, very quickly, we're going to talk about handling exceptions. And this is very, very important in your programs, when you write your programs, in the homework. So when we never learn something, I need to do it. I need to do it forever. So when writing a program, OK, I don't need you from now on, since we explained files and reading, writing the files, just to generate data on the fly. Try almost to include files. Save your data in the files, read it from the files. OK, it will get you experience, better experience, and will get you will get you like close to a real program, right? And they're very easy, as you saw in the, in the first part of this lecture. Exceptions, okay? Always, when you do mistake, there is exception. You throw an exception, right? So, so for example, I already explained that. So if I say a number, I'm input, I'm reading a number, and I'm casting it as an integer. So the input must be what? Integer. What if you enter a string? It will throw an exception. So print, okay, so for example in here, okay, I, I mean the code is print, you enter the valid integer of, and I'm, 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 I'm converting into string, okay, print thank you. So let's say that enter integer five, good. Enter printed the message, thanks, no problem. In this execution, I entered five. The operating system, the program, will do what? Will it throw an exception, an error message? What is the error message in here? It's a value error. You're not supposed to enter five. You're supposed to enter, you're not supposed to enter five in letters. You're supposed to enter five in digits, right? In number, in integer. So it will throw exception. Once it throw exception, your program is not functioning. You should not allow that to happen, all right? All right? You should not allow that happen to happen. So what you do, okay, you have to use a try statement, try statement. So in the value error exceptions, it could be integer, so can't convert the data argument to an integer value, or a float. Can you please follow here? Can't convert the data argument to a float value. So how we solve this? Python is a great. So try the statements. This statement could be could give you an exception. Okay? So if it gives you an exception, okay, execute something else. Right? If this does not give you exception, this part will not be executed. Try statements. If this statement does not give you exception, this part will not be executed. If it gives you an exception, where are you going to go? Execute this part, right? Execute that exception. Fair? All right. So how to fix the pro well, how to fix this program in here? This program could give you an exception, error, value, exception, right? So I have to insert try statement. Okay? So try colon. 
So I have my code. What is a code? Enter integer, input integer, and print the value of the integer. If I go and enter string as 5, for example, like this, 5, this will throw an exception. So the accept value error, that's the name of the exception. What you're going to do, what, what, you're going to print a sentence. You entered an invalid integer. Please try again. And the program will continue execution. It handles the exception. It handles the exception. So for example, enter an integer, you give a five, digit five. Which part will be executed? The try part. If you enter five like that, which part will be executed? The exception part. So no error, you'll execute everything in the try sentence. If there is an error, you execute the exception error. All right. Is there a possibility to have more than one error? Different kinds of errors. Yes. Let's say that, yes, right? Let's say that you are reading a file. What kind of errors you could have? There is no file. Or the file is not, or, or file is not, or let's say you are writing to a file. The file, for example, does not exist, or you cannot, cannot write to that directory, or you cannot open the directory, or the, the, the file has a lock. Many errors could happen, okay? More than one errors, right? All right, so this is the same thing again. So basically what we do, try, execute. If there's an exception in here, we're gonna go to the accept, and that's it, we are done, okay? This is, uh, we could take a look at that. So, the hierarchy for five common exceptions. What are the five common exceptions? The base, the top exception is called exception with a capital E. Okay? Under the exception you have OS error and value error. Value error. Under OS error if we have five exists error, five exists this error and five not found error. All right? This is the simple thing in your text, right? In your text. Is this the only exceptions you could have? No. So this exception is a child of this, this is a child of that. All right? All right. So there is many others. So for example, in here, I give you a link. You could take a look at it. I'll open it right now. Okay? So that's the base exception. And the sub, okay, what is exception? Error. Is what? An error. Yeah, I understand. But what it is in Python? Is it like a reroute? It's a class. Uh, I cannot ask that question the right way. So you're not, okay? It's a, it's a class. Okay? Remember what we said everything in Python is a class? So what is exception? It's a class. You know that the classes you have inheritance, class, sub class, sub sub class, sub 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 class. Or we have a class, super class, super, super class, and we're gonna come to so there's the 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 the, the, the base exception class is called base exception. Under that there is exception and keyboard interrupt. Alright? What's keyboard interrupt? Like program. Control C, right? Right? And exception, right? Under exception we have which one we used in a few seconds ago? OS error. OS error. Under that we have file exists error, permission error, and many others. This is just a simple, right? I'll show it to you in a second. Also, we have uh, value error. Where is the value error? Here. The value error, right. Does this mean that the OS error inherits from, from exception? exception. Yeah. All right? From exception. Kind of a specialized exception. Okay. So, okay. Take a look at this. This is the, all the exceptions of Python. So I'm not sure. Let me try to open it. So that's the exception hierarchy. So this is a base exception. Inside the base exception, there is 
system exit keyboard interrupt there is generator exit there is exception that's what we use usually in the programming a generator exception and in size generator exceptions there is many exceptions and sub exceptions so the one we were dealing for example with OS error right can you see oh why well, you guys are tell me you cannot see what's wrong with you guys Now you can see, right? So this is like from a website, and here you can take a look at it. Okay, so that's the exception hierarchy, you see? So the base exception, underneath it, there is sub exceptions, right? Like system, for example, system, exit, keyboard, interrupt, generator, exit, exception. That's what we use in programming, right? Which one we, we worked with a few seconds ago? Okay, we worked, for example, with Here, OS error, right? Inside it, what you have? Plucking I/O error, child process error, connection error. Okay, this is for connection errors. Then in here for files, for example, file exist error, file not found error, interrupt said error, whatever. Okay, error. Also, we worked with the runtime error, for example, errors. If you have runtime errors. Wordings, uh, type error here, right? There is a value error, value error. Inside the value error, there's unit code error, then, and after that, sub errors. So these are all the exceptions, okay, available, inherited from the base exception. Also, you could write your own exception. You could write your own exception. All right. Oh my God, the same thing happened again. The syntax for a try statement. So this is so you could have try statements except exception name, okay, and the statements, and you could have another exception because you could. You could, you know, expect different exceptions to happen. So if this exception happens, do these statements. If this exception happens, do these statements. Okay? All right. So for example, in here, okay, let's take a look at this. So file name, input into a file name. So you're trying to read a file name. You're supposed to enter a file name, right? Okay, and you have a movies and empty list. So try. With open, what I'm trying to do now to open a file name with open file name as a file for line in a file line replacing the end of the line, and I'm trying to append to where append to where to the list, right? What kind of errors or possible errors could have here? File not found. So if the, if the system gives you a file, you're trying to open a file, it's not existing. It's going to give you an exception, which is file not found error. What you do with that? Print could not find the file name. What if the system gives you OS error? And remember, this is a child. You have to put them in order. So the, the, the little child first. The parent, the parent of the parent then, right? Then accept OS error, print file found error reading file. The file is existing, but you cannot read it for a reason. It's corrupt file, for example. What is the par what, what is the parent of all the exceptions is? Exception. Okay, some other exception. So accept exception and then print an unexpected error icon. So this is the parent, child, Grandchild. Okay? Remember the chart we have? Okay? So in here, this code is protective against how many exceptions? All of them. Right? But, okay, because how many exceptions under exceptions? Many. Right? Many. 
But if I need to be careful about two specific exceptions, I could add them in here. So if I remove, for example, if I remove these two lines in here and then keep the exception in here, will it work? It will work. The only problem that when I have an exception, I will not know exactly what has happened. <coughs> Clear? Okay, I will not know exactly what has happened. If I really need to know exactly what has happened, I have to expect the errors and put different exceptions. In the other word, you know, if I remove these lines, okay, so I gonna tell the user and an expected error accurate. That's it. What the user gonna do? Is there a useful information for him? No. But if I put these two, if I get exception from here, file found, but cannot read. Go check the file. It's there. But it's not. You know, you give indication to the user there is a problem with the file. And here, what you do? You tell them. You tell him, for example, the file is not existing. Right. So it's a very important to okay to create. A, okay. So if you need to know a type of an, a function or a type of object, so type object is very important. I mean, I can't write any code without using a type, especially in Python. Sometimes it gets confusing what is a type, especially like when you move a string to a list, list is, you know, you know, type is a very important. And exit, exit also is apart from the sys module, okay? So for example, in here, the complete syntax for the Accept the close. So okay, okay. So in here, for example, import says the file. I'm opening the file, movies. Okay, and now, okay, accept file not found error as e. I'm giving it a shortcut as an e. If that happens, I'm giving a message and I'm printing the message of e, and so on and so forth. So if there is an exception in the middle of the program, what do you have to do? Sometimes. Exit the program. So you go sys exit. When you have difficulty, okay, in the program, okay, sys and exit. So sys is what I'm with you, and you exit the program. Okay, as you go sequence. Anyways, you could take a look. This is the same file that. Uh, so this is this is what I needed to take a look. Try statements. If there is an exception in here. The statements will be executed. If this exception happens, the statements will be executed. Finally, will be executed anyways. Finally, will be executed anyways if there is no what exceptions. So, this is successful. Finally, will be will be executed. If there is any exception in between, finally will not be executed. So finally, it will be executed always, okay, if there is no exceptions. What is a good thing you could do in a finally? Clean up, right? Clean up. What clean up we have learned in this class so far? Close. Okay, you could put a clause in the finally. So you open the file in here, and you close in here. All right? So for example, in here, try with, I opened and all of that. Except exception. Okay. So if there is no executed, if there is exception, this would go on here, right? Or you could do it this way. Try finally file close. Finally. Fine. So in here, remember, I did not use with. So if I don't use with, I have to use explicitly the close method. A close method. All right. So try exception, 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 finally. You have one try, one finally, one and more exception in between, all right? Also, you could raise your own exception. These are system exceptions, right? These are system exceptions. You could create your own exception. You could create your own exception, very simple. So for example, raise value error and you give it a sentence okay let's take up maybe there's an example take a look in here okay try <coughs> with open you open a file okay and then what you did in here just for testing what you did raise 
OS error, OS error. You raised an exception. So when you raise an exception now, the rest of this will not be executed, right? It's going to go where? To the accept. Right? So you raise an exception. Before in the previous examples, the exception will be raised by who? By who? The system. By the system. If you need to raise the exception by yourself, you are given a method called raise, a function called raise. So if you raise an exception in here, will this be executed? No. It's going to go where? To the exception. Why would you like to raise raise an exception? It's your call. The business in the, in the in the so for example, if you ask a person or, or, the, or the the user to enter a value between ten and ten and twenty, and then he enters thirty, so you raise an raise an exception. It's a logic. It becomes your logic. So it's it's going to be inside the if statement. It could be inside if statement. It could be inside if statement. So for example, for example in here, okay, look in here. This is a good example. You define get movies from the file, uh, get movies file name. Okay, this is a function called get movies, and you pass to it a file name. If the length of the file name equals zero, that means a person hit enter without entering the file name. What does it mean? He did not enter a file name. So what are you going to do yourself as a programmer? Raise an exception. Raise an exception. So what you did, raise, value error, a file, name, argument, is required. Enter something, ah, right, raise an exception. So you could use it to raise your own exception. And if you raise, if this happens, where, where, where are you going to go from there? It will go to the accept. Also, uh, what time is it? 25. Okay, I have good five minutes, right? Okay, so that's a lot. Okay, all right. So, all right. So, logging. Okay, this is also not in your text. So, take a look at it. When you write a big program, okay, any program you run now, what you have, you have a log to log the errors, the warnings, all of that. So that's provided for you, and that's what I need you also in your projects to include. All right. All right, take a look at it. So for example, logging an exception and raising if, usually like when you have like a crash in a program, Microsoft, whatever, or like, um, you know, uh, any big big software, right? Crash, you call the tech support. What does the tech support ask you to provide them with? Log files. If you are a system administrator, and the system crashed, what is the first thing you look at? The log files, right? What that what log file co collects? The errors, the warnings, all of that, right? So when you need to check where is the problem, you go to the log file. You're writing a program and it crashes. So what you should do? collect all these exceptions, all these errors in a place, in a file, okay? Then after that, when you study the file, you know why is it happening, what kind of crashes are happening. You agree? That's a log file, right? Okay, so that's easy. So for example, look in here, okay? Uh, defining a function, try whatever it does in here, I don't care. Okay, it's return, except there's an exception. Okay, what I had a line in here? Log exception. Log the exception. Okay. Log the exception. Okay. That will record the exception has happened. It will log it. Log means save, right? Also, I mean, this is an instructions how to log, and this more instructions in here could go to the link. So usually you use it for debug as information for warning errors and critical. All there's five levels. Critical is the most, error less, warning, info, debug. Okay, the detail, details in the tutorial, you could take a look in here. But look at this example, import logging. So if you need to do logging in your program, you import logging, then what you say? Logging, warning, watch out. So will it print a message to the console? So if there is an exception, 
that give you warning, it will be printed to the council. Clear? Okay. And here, logging info. Remember that we have how many levels? Here. Info is low. Warning higher. So warning will be printed to the council. Error will be printed to the council. Critical will be printed to the council. Info will not be printed to the council. That's how it's designed. So here, for example, logging info. I told you so. Will not print it to any anything. Info does not get it printed. Warning will be printed. Critical will be printed. Error will be printed to the council. All right. So warning, root, watch out. Okay. Okay. Just printed this. Do not print this. All right, this is your print when you execute all the errors to where? To the council, right? To the council, you know, to the screen, to the council. Is it a good way? What's the better way? Lo this is logging, what, logging to a console. So what's the better way? What's the better way? The log file? Yeah, log file, save it to a file. Yeah. That's what you're saying, thank you. Okay, so save it to? A file. So import login, okay, then login, basic configuration, file name, example.log, and the level, login debug. So anything from debug and higher will be saved to that file. Any exception that with the debug and higher will be saved to that file. Logging debug, this message should go to the log file. Logging info, so should this. Logging warning, and this too. It will be good. So. Try it, okay, try it to create. So do you, when you have a massive program and could have exceptions, remember that the exceptions is not only system exceptions. It could be logic exceptions because you could raise, you could raise, right, raise exceptions. You need to log all of that. Either you log it to the console, okay, which is silly, okay, it's good for debugging if you debug in front of the system, okay, and it will be go, going to the log. So log certain file in the system, right? So all the programs you purchase, all the, the software you purchase, okay? They have a log. Part of it is a log, okay? To log the data and all of that. So try it out. This is a very good professional. And why I add it here, you know, it, I mean, when you go for job interviews, many people don't cover these details that, you know, in, in academia, but, but you know, knowing such stuff, and you know, it shows that you know what you are doing. All right? They ask you to write a code, a simple code. You know, nowadays when you go for an interview, usually they ask you to write a code. You usually go through two, three, four, five, I heard six interviews. I have my GA last semester, he's, he's interviewed with Amazon, for example. Five levels. Past the four levels, he did not pass the last, last, last level, right? And all of them, they write, they write him, ask him to write a code and all of that. So when you ask you to write a code and you include like the, 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 the documentation, include the, how to document, you know, the, the, as I told you last time, when you write a code, you have to write like a story. Every variable has to have a good name. Okay, every class has a good name. Comments. So a person who starts reading from top to down is like reading a story, understand what's doing. That's number one. Okay, number two, logging, if there is an error, so we added that to your code. Number three, the exceptions, right? Everything, you have to be, you know, assertive. You have to be assertive. What if the logic is wrong? What if the user enter wrong data? Okay, the, 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 the interviewer or the person or the company will not ask you to do that. will ask you for a server, but if you are able to include all of this within the 40 minutes usually they give you to write the code, okay, it, it will show that you are a great programmer, that you know what you are doing, okay? What is the major problem? <coughs> what is the major problem most of programmers have? These are habits. Mm -hmm. These become habits. If your habit always, whenever you write a couple of code, you have a comment, okay? Explaining what, we, what you are doing. If, you, if your habit, don't, don't be like me when you give example x equals y. What is x? What is y? I mean, if I write a code o over a night, x, y, z, in the morning I sleep, I wake up, I forget what is x, what is y, what, all of that. Okay? But if, if you write like long name for the variables, for the class names, that could give you self-explanation. 
because we get lazy. You cannot get lazy, right? If you have a log file, you write a log file, symbol, just three, four lines, just as part of the habit. You add them somewhere there, right? It will log all things. Okay, you go for an interview. I mean, this guy, you know, it's really very careful, very thoughtful, okay? This is just the extra, of course. You have to have algorithms, you have to have a logic, you have to know how to do the program. But these things, you always forget them. Why? Because it's not part of your habit, okay? It's not part of what you are doing every day. Make it part of you. I need you in the homework, my GA, okay? I need you to watch this out. So a person give you a code without like comments and proper names, just, you know, you know, give him a lesson, at least the first few assignments. Okay, so very important, okay? All right, so then after that, how to work with recursion algorithms. This is very simple, you have done that, you've done that many times. So for example, you know, a, a function calling itself, okay? So add numbers, for example, to add the numbers, total zero for a number in the range, over plus one, then total number. This is a normal way, a very cursive way, there is add numbers, okay? And then you return upper plus the add number. So you call itself, okay? I mean, there's five, I think, examples for recursion. These for you to enjoy them, to understand them, to learn them. I'm not going to explain. Recursion is part of your course. It's part of your understanding. Simple, you have done them in CS101, CS102, in object-oriented programming. What's a short cut for object-oriented programming? Oop, oops. oop, or oops, oops, o o b. All right, oop. All right. So you take a look at them and you enjoy them. Any questions for me? Go second. Go third. You have a good day. Thank you.